Welcome to Discussions of Music, Healing, and Consciousness with your hosts, Chris Noble and Bill Perotsman. This episode is part one of three, in which we explore the basics of frequency, vibration, pitch, harmonics, healing, and consciousness. Here we explore the building blocks you'll need to understand and set the stage for the content of the two episodes that follow. If you're already familiar with frequency, vibration, and pitch, feel free to fast forward this one and continue with the second of the three episodes. We'll be talking about all this and much, much more as always in these open conversations here on discussions of music, healing, and consciousness. You know, I've been struggling with this whole idea of frequency and vibration and people say, oh, raise your vibration, right? Or, you know, raise your frequency. Well, you know, but my scientific mind is like vibration is blah, 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 hertz, kilo, blah, blah. You know, and I get into right. all the, the scientific stuff on that and realize that there's some really important vibrations that are happening at a pretty low frequency. <laughs> I'm Very. mixing all the meth, you know, so let's get, try to get our language straight. You know what I'm saying? So when we talk, yeah. at least here, when, when you and I say frequency, we know what it means. When we say hertz, we know what it means. When we say, you know, consciousness and and the the state of the brain like we were talking about on the binaural beats episode you know there's a there's a (laughs) what i want to call it now (laughs) language is tough especially the english language i've seen some pretty interesting lectures on how limited um you know our english language is in in a sense of uh dimensionality and reality a way that we describe reality i think about how many people come back from a psychedelic experience and they're like i just I can't describe what I experienced. There's, I, no, there's no words. There's no language for it. Yeah. And there's other supposedly, you know, some of these older languages, um, p- perhaps languages from certain um, indigenous tribes all around the world. They describe reality quite, quite differently. They describe time differently. I've heard some of these more ancient languages have a, a less linear way of describing time and yeah. space yeah separation there's no such thing as separation in a lot of these languages so you know i think that's a big thing right off the bat to even recognize it's just also the limitation of our of our english language too just to describe some of this stuff right well, let's why don't we start with the scientific terms because it's you know as musicians we can talk about pitch like what note it is but if we break that down even a little bit more we can say uh, and we'll just start with one like that wonderful e the low e that is 40 hertz yeah Okay, so that's a great place to start. So low E on the piano. So I don't know, it's E1. Probably if you're looking at a keyboard, yeah. that means from the left, it's the first E that you get to as you progress from left to right. Mm-hmm. Pretty low pitch. So 40 hertz means what? There's something is happening 40 times a second with a hertz, right? Yeah. What is yeah. it that's happening? Well, yeah, right. I mean, that is the question. So I mean, from a technical term, you've got a sound wave oscillating 40 times in that second. But we know there's more going on with that. There happens to be, because of quantum mechanics, we know everything is in a state of vibration. So therefore, every as every type of frequency, every type of anything you experience in, in reality, including light, is a frequency, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's so happening therefore, at, uh, like a number of times per second, right? Everything, and it's just lots of different variations on that, basically. Yeah. And so with 40 hertz as an example, it just so happens that for some reason, 40 oscillations a second does something to a lot of people and particularly bill and it knocks him out and puts him to sleep <laughs> puts him to sleep in this blissful amazing state right yeah but so why we still don't know right so we, we don't know why but we we know we can because we can look at 40 hertz right and and we can say hey that's cool something is happening and i can hear it and and yeah i guess most importantly hearing it is the thing when it's music if it were happening at a higher a much higher uh vibrational frequency or cycles per second or hertz you might be able to see it right yeah exactly right right so that's what our senses are just smell is a frequency you know touch is a frequency too so yeah yeah. so this this whole idea of of how how fast something is happening could be something that you hear or the way you see a, a color colors have depending upon what they, their appearance, red look, has a different vibrational frequency than yellow and blue and all of that. Ultraviolet, right. you've heard. And Which we can't see, but can't see. Uh, a lot of animals can. can. Yeah, a lot there's of animals can. Yeah. these perceptions that we have are, are highly limited to the this huge range of frequencies or oscillations, you know, cycles per second. 
and they could go way up there because you talk about like, you know, how many gigahertz is your phone? Is it 2.4 or five? Right. And then and what are you the, using Bluetooth? That's also 2.4 yeah, gigahertz there's a, versus yeah. Wi-Fi. Which means what? 5 million cycles per second. <laughs> is that a gigahertz? Or Something is it like 5 that. Billion? It's up there, right? It's up there. Yeah. So we can't see or hear that stuff, but we know it's there. And transmit uh, information with that, you know? Oh, shoot. Yeah. We can send, you know, microwave signals around the world. There's all kinds of stuff in there. So, uh, I mean, our world where you and I work, <laughs> we're primarily interested in what we can hear mm -hmm. or perhaps what we can feel like vibration. If you put your hand on a, a, a giant drum and feel it as somebody strikes the drum, you'd feel a vibration in your hand, that kind of vibration. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I'm pretty good with that. Now let's get complicated, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and we mentioned this in the last episode we did on binaural beats, and people have mentioned this before, but a binaural beat is basically the space between the sounds, right? Yeah, and it's an interference pattern. So it's really the, yeah. it's the, your brain, when you're listening to a binaural beat for maximum effectiveness, as far as we know right now, you got one frequency coming in one ear and a different one in, an, in your other ear, creating an interference pattern of various different frequencies. So if I'm listening to 40 hertz in my left ear and I play uh, 42 hertz or something in my right ear, I'm going to experience that as being out of tune. Yeah. Or we've said before, out of phase, there's out lots of, of ways to say it. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm, I'm hearing something different than the pure 40 hertz. Or, or I actually am hearing it, but then there's what's going on in my mind. My mind is now interpreting that. And I jumped right to it and said, oh, it's out of tune, right? Or out of phase. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a binaural beat because there are two different hertz oscillations, frequencies happening in my left and my right ear. And my brain is trying to reconcile the two of them and, and trying to come up with an answer. And the answer it comes up with is something doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah. And it's called entrainment. What happens with your brain, right? It's entrained now to a new frequency. And, and what it picks up is, is it almost kind of cancels out the um the source of both frequencies and it focuses in on the uh the differential or the the interference pattern so what that really means in plain english is you got 40 hertz in one ear 42 hertz in the other ear your brain starts to then entrain and recognizes two hertz rather than 40 and 42 and one well what's the difference between those it's two hertz difference two hertz right yeah right so then now your brain is actually interpreting a two hertz binaural beat which we know is down in the delta wave range which then and now, all of a sudden, instead of it just being like a, ooh, or actually, I guess 40 hertz is more like, ooh, like really yeah. low. Instead of it being a sound that you can hear like that, then you're going to start to hear a whoa, 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 whoa kind of sound because it's slow. It's a slow, it's a low frequency. But that that oscillation, that out of phaseness is now the two hertz telling your brain that it's a delta wave. And then now your brain is entrained into a deep, deep, deep state of relaxation and consciousness that you'd experience in deep sleep, all, all because of a two hertz differential binaural beat created in your brain. So that two hertz, that thing that's happening two times per second is the, the okay, everybody, this is gonna be a little bit difficult, but that two hertz difference is the frequency, which I can't hear, but which my brain can experience, or perhaps my entire body can experience that that two hertz, that two times per second interference pattern. Yeah, I think it's a, a, a body experiential thing. I think it really yeah, starts with that the ears. Too. Yeah, and, you know, it starts with the ears, but then it, it really does start to, I, I guess because of the effects that, you know, different brain waves have do different things to your body. You know, for example, gamma waves, you're feeling more athletic. Uh, you're probably going to be like ready to go, right? And, and versus a delta wave, your body is done, like out, you're fully relaxed. So, so you think it'd, be, it'd be fair to say that the faster the, the, the differential is happening, the higher the brain state or That's the what, faster, I don't want to say higher and lower, but I have to use something. Maybe I should say yeah. faster. The, an increased oscillation or an increased differential versus a decreased, you know, I, I, yeah, whatever word you want to use for that. Yeah, basically, because then that's, that's what's giving your brain the entrainment of either a delta wave, beta wave, alpha wave, theta wave, um, and gamma wave, right? So and you just is, go up. This is kind of weird, but you know we, we know that 40, 40 hertz puts Bill to sleep. 
<laughs> what if I were to introduce a, what's a pretty fast um, brain wave? Well, fast one would be like yeah. 40, 44 hertz or something. So 44. So if, what if, if I were to introduce... Interference pattern, not not just the 40 yeah, yeah, hertz yeah. that you're talking about. So if I'm at this sleepy 40 hertz that I love, and I put an interference pattern that's at 40 hertz on top of that, what happens to me? Because well, that's we like gotta... having... <laughs> Guinea pig that one, Bill. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right? I, I'm not yeah. sure. That's a good yeah, I'm question. not sure either. I mean, I can find out because because um, now I'm curious. If that interference pattern is happening at the same rate as the pitch that I'm hearing... What will what will be the result? And I mean, those interference patterns don't go very high. They're mostly pretty low. So you, you're playing around with a very narrow range between, I don't know, two hertz and what, 70 hertz but maybe is the top? Even less than that. I mean, gamma waves, well, they, yeah, supposedly they, I think they go from like 40 to 60. I could be wrong on that. I can do a quick search to double check that one. But I'm um, they don't go very high. I would say 100 hertz max. And that's as far as we know right now, but I'm sure as time progresses, we constantly find, you know, depth of how complex not only reality is, but our human bodies and capabilities are. So I'm sure there's, you know, higher states perhaps to, to have, but as far as we know, that's, that's about it. Did you see if it goes up to a... Uh... Oh no, I, I was just sort of, I'm, I'm, I'm oscillating <laughs> myself around this question <laughs> yeah. because this, this would suggest that there is a range just like our ability to hear, there is a range at which our interference pattern would top out, right? I mean, if you've got a brain that's vibrating as fast as any of the notes above middle C on the piano, that's a pretty active brain, considering that most of what the brain does is below 40 hertz, 60 hertz. Yeah, it's actually as high, only as high as 40 hertz. So, like to, you know, 440, uh, which is 10 times where we started, A440 yeah. or A432, don't matter to me. That's way bigger than the brain can grok if it's alpha, beta, gamma, delta kind of processor tops out around 70 hertz. And I'm being generous on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it makes it makes sense to get these terms down because you want to tell somebody, okay, uh, Bill, you need probably play with that 40 hertz pitch <laughs> that you love so much. And because if you want to sleep, you should probably tone down the binaural beats and put them somewhere in the single digits rather than trying to give your brain some, you know, incredible boost with a 40 hertz interference pattern. It's kind of like, um, do you really want to drink coffee before bed? You know, like there you go. Yes, it, these are the things that we start to become, I guess, more aware of, right? With frequency and binaural beats, is okay, cool. We're starting to understand what they what they can do, but also it's now it's you know, well, what are the applications, and therefore, are you sure you're giving yourself the the right application at the right time? You know, yeah. I'm sure just like anything, you know, sound can be used for negative and positive and not that anything nefarious just more like you know sometimes you don't want no. coffee at like 10 be aware PM. right you know be aware right do, do something smart you know if you want something then don't don't prescribe something that counter indicates or counter interferes with itself <laughs> hoping that you're going to get what you want because it ain't going to happen people if you're feeling if you're feeling you know adventurous and go ahead this is pretty harmless stuff to experiment with and uh you know let us know because i think this is going to be until maybe places like, I don't know, Johns Hopkins starts doing more um, research on on these things and, and really, you know, like real research and then how to apply them for, I don't know, things like PTSD and anxiety reduction and better sleep, insomnia, whatever. Uh, and maybe they are. Maybe I, I maybe there are some uh, institutions that are doing some great research on this. But as far as I know, there aren't. And, you know, when I first got into this, I had to reverse engineer everything because I couldn't find, you know, nada right. on the uh, on the internet for how to write binaurals what what they're really all about i mean there is some information but anyway not a lot out there so uh you know for those listening it really is up to us to kind of experiment with this stuff and you know this can be a great this podcast is one of is kind of like an area or a hub where we can share this information because i know bill and myself are just always kind of just what's well, the we're like mad scientists half the time it's <laughs> just trying to it's figure true. this out <laughs> so and it, it makes sense to play around and I'll, I'll here's what i'll do i'll guarantee that i'll try the 40 hertz tone with a 40 hertz binaural interference pattern 
There we go. And give you a report and let you know whether I fell asleep or not. Because I'm betting right. I'm just going to wake up confused if I have sleep at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's really interesting. I And I don't know what this is. I'm just reading this very quickly on uh, Wikipedia of all places here. But um, they're very interested in the gamma wave frequency. It's actually a, a much larger range from 25 to 140 hertz. However, 140, okay. Yeah, but you know what's funny is that they 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 say there's a and they don't elaborate on this, but I'll, I'll look into this more. Uh, Forty hertz is a particular point of interest, and I'm just going to quickly read what this says. On it's actually quite interesting. So gamma gamma rhythms are correlated with large scale brain network activity and cognitive phenomena such as working memory, attention, and perceptual grouping, and can be increased by amplitude via meditation or neural stimulation, in other words, by neural beats. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. And so here, listen to this last sentence here. Altered gamma activity has been observed in many mood and cognitive disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, and schizophrenia. Interestingly enough, I came across the 40 hertz whole, that specific frequency study when I was looking through Alzheimer's um, remedies and alternative yeah um you know uh modalities that were being you know researched so interesting that that just pops up here on wikipedia 40 hertz there's there's something we'll probably end up coming back to this for the rest of our lives back and forth there's certain numbers and we know this with solfeggio frequencies as well which would be something to get uh would be an interesting study as well to go deeper into solfeggio frequencies for those of you who don't know these are also very specific frequencies uh with well specific functions that were discovered i Hard to say, probably rediscovered um, a hundred or a couple hundred years ago because they were used actually in um, a lot of old uh, choral music. As far as I, I don't know if you know that, but the history of that, Bill, uh, I'm not as familiar with solfeggio frequencies, but that's um, another er interesting area and example of there's the frequency differentials that we talk about, which kind of come into brainwave, you know, different states of uh, consciousness. This is the binaural beats, but then there's certain frequencies, like Bill mentioned, 40 hertz, that also have very different, um, let's say, uh, functionality to them. So that's another cool thing to start figuring out is now we've got the interference pattern frequencies, but then the actual frequencies that do different things. And so, I mean, it's a, it's a very, I can, I absolutely know intuitively that we're just like scratching the surface of this very complex um, area that we've, you know, we really don't know much about. Thank you for listening in on our conversation and for taking time to show your appreciation with a like, share, or subscribe. Discussions of music, healing, and consciousness is a practice of spontaneity, and we welcome your comments, ideas, and questions. There are ways to connect with us in the show notes, so let us hear from you. Until next time, this is Bill Protzman along with Chris Noble wishing you great musical health. Samara Huchaya.